and you can see right, it's going in you don't want to force it too hard okay if you force it too hard this side could break to the other end <clears throat> all right so as you can see um, I'm about to link the two left and the two sides of this together and uh, yeah I've split a bit of pine obviously you should probably get your your lumber dimensioned to begin with I'm gonna be doing some dimensioning for the the timber which I won't be covering in this in this uh, video but the rough idea is uh, as such As you can see, I am out in the open. Alright, so it got a bit too late and then the neighbors started complaining so I had to come down and uh, I thought of just taking this opportunity to shoot a video outdoors just to show you how portable this is. And I hope I brought everything uh, back uh, down here. If not, I am screwed. Okay, so just a bit of catch up. We were doing the, we were marking out the, we were getting these ready. So uh, I split this from a board and got them planed down roughly. And we're gonna do a sliding dovetail on the, the side of this, right? And we're gonna pop it in. And the sliding dovetail is actually a joint that is covered in proper, formerly by Robin. So if you, I will include the link in the description so that you can actually uh, follow his uh, video and watch how to do a proper fine furniture kind of a sliding dovetail. But today we're just going to mark it out uh, roughly and cut it up. The, the wood is not even square as you can tell, right? It's, it's honestly not in the best condition. And I want to just show you how you could do this with uh, little bits of material that you have. You can find it at the dumpster or one of your old pieces of furniture you could break it apart and um, and use it for your your work okay so using your dovetail jig this is also something that I have uh, I covered in another class which is how to make this so you can go to the video which I will also put in the description you could quite easily uh, make one of these and mark out and use it for marking out dovetails and in this case we're gonna use it for marking out the sliding dovetail Okay, so put up, put down the two uh, slanted lines and use your finger to trace out the last bit of the material here, the last bit of the, the line. And we are going to cut out this uh, odd shape uh, dovetail, the dovetail tenon, and then before we proceed with the next, uh, proceed with uh, tracing it onto the rack and mortising it into the rack okay I'm gonna finish up drawing for everything else and then I'll see you when I start cutting 
Okay, so first step in the sliding dovetail is we got to cut out the shoulders. So I have got my cross cut saw here. We're gonna just pick out the shoulders there quickly. So once again, this is just a rough uh, run through of this. Uh, I would advise anyone who's trying to learn the sliding dovetail to watch Robin's video where he covers it over an hour. Uh, the, the fine details of how to cut this joint and in the proper way. Today we're going to do something that's kind of like a quick and dirty uh, method and it's the, the kind of a joint that you would use to actually put things together in a home setting or in a kind of a functional setting and it's not meant to be used for some kind of presentation work Okay, so if you need to put together like a clothes rack or a little kitchen island, anything quick and dirty like that, that that would need to be done quickly, then this is the right approach to this. Now we're gonna pare down, we're gonna pare down the, the excess. Just gonna stop, stop it against a bit of wood here. All right, okay, so I got my hole fast. Right there as a stop. Just gonna pare down the excess here. Okay. So take note that there's uh, two lines here. We're cutting the one on the inside, not the outside one. That was a mistake drawn by me. And we're gonna just um, pare down instead of cutting down because it's much easier to control if you were pairing in fact i'm just going to split the pine so this is pine if you're using pine or any other kind of soft wood you'll find that it, it has a very um, pliable grain so the grain can actually come off can actually be you can actually split the wood rather easily and in this case because this piece of wood was was uh, split instead of uh, sawn, it will be really easy to, uh, to get a straight cut along the line of the, the dovetail shape. Okay, looking at the progress here, you can see I'm basically creating a taper along this direction. Just more pairing pairing and even more pairing okay use the back of a chisel to check for an even gap you want to make sure that this face here is parallel to the body of the thing itself so that your tenon is actually going to run straight Okay, you can see one side of the dovetail has been done. I'm gonna finish up the rest of the three sides and uh, oh actually there's another seven sides left. Okay, I'm gonna do all the dovetails on everything and I'll show you once everything is done. Okay, so as you can see that's one side done. So there is actually another way to do this uh, joint which is by chopping the shoulders instead of uh, sawing it and in some cases it's actually a more accurate method and I'm going to show you the opposite of that the, the example here hmm. okay so you can see if you chop it out instead it's actually a little bit more accurate so you might prefer to do it in this method either way is fine as long as you uh, know what, what's, what you're doing okay and then you can pair out the excess just like that so take a quick look here as to how I do the pairing. Just um, 
So after you chop out the shoulders, you want to just slowly bring down the rest of the material. And this method is also very quiet, so you can quite easily do this at home without having to do any heavy, without heavy hammering or anything of that sort. Okay, I'm almost done. So, see you in the next clip. Okay, as you can see, got my sliding dovetails prepared for fitting. So, we're gonna trace it out the block here and then we're gonna cut out the excess. Okay, so the important thing about outlining a sliding dovetail is that you have to remember that it has to be wider on the inside than on the outside. So don't put your, your sliding dovetail the wrong way around, okay? If you put it the wrong way around, it's not going to work as a sliding dovetail. Okay, so make sure it's this direction. And then, um, yeah. Then you just draw out, trace out the lines on the two sides. And then we're going to cut that excess out. You do want to take note of the amount of space behind the joint to do because if there's too, not enough material here then the joint will become very weak. So I've chosen to place it at the end of the projection projected line here of this. You can place it honestly anywhere as long as you understand that you need some material behind the joint to strengthen it. On the top here, we are going to put it also a certain distance away. These measurements you can determine on your own, but I'm going to put it about 40 mm from the front edge of this uh, block here. So because these joints are not actually uh, the same identical, you have to make sure that you match the correct uh, dovetail to the correct mortise, the correct tenon to the correct mortise. So let's say you have one done here already. Then this one will have to be labeled. In this case, I'm just going to label it with a one stroke and a one stroke here. Okay, so that you know that these two match. Okay, so of course, once you mark out on the front, you're going to have to extend the line to the back. Just like that. Okay, there's no need to mark on the other side as long as you keep to saw it. Just keep to this line and this line. Uh, to, to draw it on the other side will just add to the confusion. Okay, either way, we're still going to cut it slightly bigger than we need. So slightly smaller than uh, the line prescribed. So we will still be able to pair it to exact fit later on. Okay. Okay, here's a quick shot of the sawing of this tenon, uh, this mortise. Okay, so we're going to start right on the, the end here. And the key thing is to remember, you always leave the pencil mark. Okay, you don't want to be cutting away the pencil mark, so you just leave it there. The final line. We're just not going to go all the way to the bottom because this being a joint, right? we actually want to be a bit neater than and now for the other line, the last line here. Let's hold that also. Okay. So remove the Gonna chisel out the, the, the mortise now. And for that, back to the 10mm chisel. We're gonna put a line across first. That's the first thing. We're gonna mark out the knife wall. And this is to prevent the material from from uh, exploding on the back. We're gonna turn that around and do the same on the other side. Okay, this is um, one, number one. We're gonna turn it around.
okay we're just gonna knife wall that out so that we have a good good estimate just gonna knife wall that at the cross so that the wood won't explode when you chop it through from the other side okay and since we're on this side let me just chop the rest of it out okay so can see it's relatively easy as we have already sawn off the excess uh, the, the two left sides here so when you chop on this right it's just gonna go right through it's gonna come out on the other side like that okay and the last one here Make sure to do this uh, heavy chop on the line only after the, the rest of it has been removed because if not right then the, the wood will actually push your chisel back across the line and it's going to cause the, the line to shift. Okay so always remove the front bit before you go for the line cut. Okay now that this part is empty we're going to turn it around. We're going to chop back down from this area here and this one is going to be much easier. You can see it fell right through. Through again, all right. True, okay. So as you can see, because it's a dovetail shape this is gonna be a bit difficult to uh, remove so it gets a bit narrower towards the exit okay. now I got that clamped down we're just gonna break it open with a little thing like that And then the rest of the floor will now be pad. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mahogany is really not the best wood for this. Uh, you want to try using something with a bit less complicated grain. That's working a bit better now. All right, the floor is rather clean. Okay, and then the, we, I'm going to finish out on everything else and then we're going to do the fitting for the individual uh, mortises. As you can see, right, if this is done correctly, you shouldn't be able to go in yet. Okay, it should be too tight. Okay, so here's the joint. So this is label number three and as you can see, right, it's still a little bit tight. Okay, it's gone, gone in slightly. So we're going to do a bit of a, um, just a slight, slight amount of adjustment just to get rid of some of the, the high spots in the joint. You can use this back of a chisel to check for flatness. And parallelness.
Okay, I'm not going to cover this in too much detail because you would need to practice on this. So, like, uh, just try and do this joint as a basic joint on a piece of scrap first before you attempt it on the actual thing, right? In case you ruin it. Okay, I'm going to show you how to fit this now. And it's going to be done like this. So you can see the joint here and you're just going to give it a tap with, with your hammer or your mallet and you can see right it's going in you don't want to force it too hard okay if you force it too hard this side could break to the other end okay you can see it's risen up slightly here so i'm just going to Tap it in. I'm gonna go over the edge of the table so there's a bit of space. All right. Okay, and that is a sliding dovetail. Still a bit of cleaning up to do, but that's the initial fit. So I'm gonna do that on the rest of the joints now. So when you're fitting the, the mortise, you can either pair the mortise or the tenon. In this case, if you put a square inside here, you'll realize that the mortise is actually tapered in this way. So for that purpose, for that reason, we have to actually pair the, the mortise. The mortise has to be parallel, has to be perpendicular to the end. You can't have a mortise that is tapered in this direction because then it would not hold a sliding dovetail anywhere out other than at the end of the joint. Okay, so it has to be a straight slot so that it holds throughout the entire sliding motion instead of just uh, at the end. Okay, I'm almost done there. Just be careful when you're doing this. I want to make sure that you understand where the material is going to be flying towards. Yeah, square now. So I'm gonna attempt to insert the mortise now. No, insert the tenon now. So that should be quite okay. I'm not even gonna hit it all the way in because I can really feel that it's, it's gonna work. So I don't want to waste the, the fit. Right, every time we put it in and out, it's gonna be a bit loose. All right. And it's done. Still have some assembly, uh, some finishing work to do. But this is pretty much it. Okay.